Next up is the uh, study site for Garfield Super Splash USA. And Kate Mike. Kate, thanks for coming out tonight. Katie, will you be talking a little bit about your uh, your role and uh, responsible with our super splash as well? Uh, absolutely. Hi, I'm Katie Langley, and I was the aquatic supervisor this year at Super Splash USA. And this was my assistant aquatic supervisor, Ali Luki. And we were asked tonight to kind of share um, how our summer went um, this past summer at Super Splash. So, can we begin? Absolutely. Okay, so we'll probably share the. <clears throat> This summer, we kind of debuted a few new programs. One of the things that we really did to try to boost up not only attendance, but also community involvement was our water aerobics program. What it basically was, was a program that was held on Monday and Wednesday mornings from 9 to 9.50. And it was just a great opportunity for people in the community to come on in, really get to use our amenities in a different way, as well as kind of bring a different group of patrons to the water park. Um, unfortunately, because we had kind of a late start, we didn't have the maximum attendance that we would like to, but hopefully, if we are open next summer, we'd like to continue to increase attendance and increase this program as the patrons that did attend really did enjoy the experience and it was pretty popular with some of our, I guess you could say, older patrons. Um, another thing we did this summer was obviously working anywhere <coughs> employees want to be appreciated and they want to feel welcomed and that they're doing a good job. So we developed a Mondo Maybe. If you guys do not know, Mondo is our mascot at Super Splash. She's the whale that you see everywhere. So we had a Mondo Maybe of the Month program. Every two weeks, we would recognize two lifeguards, two pool attendants, concession workers, um, and we would do some of our merchandise this summer that we did for promotions. They would get that. We would also do um, some social media posts to recognize them for how much we appreciated them. And obviously with the younger generation, social media is huge right now. Um, and it's a great way to kind of push them and make them want to be successful throughout the whole summer. These are just a couple, so these are some of our photos of some of our model babies. Again, as Katie previously stated, we had a lot of success with the program. We found that it encouraged our employees to really work harder and hopefully achieve this status. Um, it was a really fun way to kind of really interact with our employees as well as motivate them to continue to push through the entire summer. Another thing that we did this summer which was really neat is we actually had a marketing intern and that helped out a lot for us that we were able to do the pool management side of it. And so what we did is we had a college student um, this past summer that was in marketing and graphic design and so she was an intern at Super Splash and that was an awesome opportunity to have an intern. So we did a big boost on social media. Obviously with social media, a lot of times it's free. So it's a great way to advertise Super Splash what's going on. So we hit it hard with Instagram contests. Obviously with high school and middle school, Instagram is, is the thing right now. So we had weekly Instagram contests and we would give out free passes for those that um, won for that week. And so here are a couple of our Instagram winners and each week it was a different theme. One of the great things about using Instagram and Facebook to, publish, to publicize the water park is, as Katie said, it was free, and also it reaches a whole different, I guess you could say, um, market of individuals throughout the entire city. Not only are people in Great Town having access to these materials, but we're also reading patrons from Lee Summit, Independence, Overland Park. It's a really great way to get us out throughout the entire metropolitan area. Um, so with having our intern, she was able to do a lot of special events this summer and promotions. We also wanted to do some giving back to Raytown. So we're going to quickly go over some of the events we did this summer. Um, we partnered up with Reap. Twice we did a canned food drive, twice with Reap. And then at the end of the summer, we also did a backpack drive that we partnered up with Reap um, to donate to that organization. So here are some of the pictures with the staff. It's, there's some of the um, graphic arts that our intern did that we would post on social media throughout the community. 
One of our other pushes this summer was really to do <coughs> events that would bring people to the pool, I mean, Super Slashy Destination. The first one we did was our summer kickoff luau, and I think it was one of our most fun and most popular events. What we did at this is we had a designated time throughout the day, and from like 2 to 5 p.m., 5 p.m., for example, or in this situation, 2 to 4 p.m., different guests would come in, and we would have different games and activities going on throughout the entire park. It really got individuals excited about coming to Super Splash, as well as kind of show all the different things we have to offer. We really tried to do things that engage the entire family, so we did things that the youngest patrons could enjoy, like handing out stickers and having fun music, to things that some of our older people could enjoy, like for Father's Day we did father-child or parent-child relays and stuff like that. So another event we did in Super Splash was Father's Day. Um, we ended up uh, doing half-off emissions for dads. We also, one of the big giveaways we did was we did free Royals family for dad <coughs> tickets. Um, so that was a great way to bring the families to Super Splash. And again, throughout the whole um, day, we had different events. All of the management staff dressed up in ties and Okay, and then another one of our events that was pretty popular was Superhero Weekend. And for Superhero Weekend, what we did, it's pretty self-explanatory, is we had a superhero-themed weekend full of fun events. We had a photo booth, we had games that were superhero-themed. Basically, what we did for these events was we found creative ways to give back to the community because <coughs> the Super Slash is a community experience. So through these different games and different activities, we drew in patrons as well as showed them what Super Slash had to offer and what fun and exciting things we could do at the facility. And then another event we did is we did a 4th of a July, July event, so you can see our staff. It took us a while to spell out you to say, so that we did it. <laughs> and kind of going off of that photo, a lot of our staff really enjoyed these events, and it got them excited about coming to work. So when they found out we were having an event like Superhero Weekend, we had staff members asking if they could wear towels around their neck while they were in the <laughs> on their lifeguards. We had staff members putting Blondo tattoos on their faces, kind of just getting into the spirit and getting into what Super Slash really has to offer. Another activity we did was we uh, sponsored a Missouri Care, um, which was a free event hosted by the healthcare group. We had 1,500 patrons that came to Super Splash um, for free for the time of three to seven, and working with Missouri Care, we went to other water parks Throughout each year, they go somewhere else, and they wrote us the nice, nicest thank you note, saying that it was the most well organized um, staff. Everything just ran so smoothly, so that was always good to hear positive feedback from that. Um, we're just going to go really quickly. Another activity we did: we tried to do two big ones a um, a month, so we did a pirate weekend. So just very similar. <coughs> And then we also, at the end, we did a USA kind of Olympic type. And it was neat because we were able to reuse a lot of the stuff that we already had. Um, one of the new things that we really tried to push this year were Super Splash promotional materials. As Katie previously mentioned, we did give some of our promotional materials to lifeguards as incentives for winning Mondo Media of the Month. Really popular and great ones that we had were the sun bodies and the beach balls. They're cheap and expensive fun ways to kind of get the Super Slash USA name out there. And I don't know how many times uh, throughout the summer that I would see people at Price Trump or whatever wearing the sunglasses with Super Splash A USA on the side of it. So. This summer with um, social media, like we said, we really had a giant, giant push and we were very successful in our push. Um, at the beginning of the season, we had six followers on Instagram. Towards the middle of the summer, we had 79 followers on, I'm not apologize, on Twitter. Towards the summer, we had 79. At the end of the season, our goal was over 100, and I believe we reached that. On Facebook, we made our, we made our goal. We ended up beating Adventure Oasis in likes on Facebook, which was our ultimate objective for the summer. And we really just kind of pushed to get the word out there. The neat thing about Facebook is it shows, uh, it shows you a lot of stuff about who's looking at your page to grow. So you can see, um, on this chart up here, starting on May, that was how many we, likes we had, and you can obviously see the growth throughout the summer, and that was not even right now, this was, I believe that was at the beginning of August, so you guys can see how many followers that we have. Um, and 
here are some reviews that people put on Facebook. Um, just to kind of highlight some of them, um, from the top to the bottom, we can see, you can see that people are really enjoying everything that Super Splash has to offer. They're impressed with our staff. They're saying that their children are having a great time at our facility. They are really impressed with our swim lessons as well as the quality of instructors that we have at swim lessons. As you can see that they found our instructors to be very professional and experienced and overall we had a really successful summer with them. Okay. We also did a survey and I just picked three questions you kind of can see and that's the thing that I would like to see with Super Splash is we need to get some more people in there. So that's kind of, you guys can see kind of the graph. I know it's kind of small numbers, but we did um, a graph kind of getting an idea about 3% came daily during the time of our, um, our survey, about 8% came weekly, 25% monthly, um, you can see 15% yearly, um, and at that time there was 45% that it was their first visit. Here's another thing to look at, so if you guys kind of want to see where everyone's coming from, this is a graph that kind of breaks down um, the percentage of the different cities surrounding Raytown, um, and there's a chart to go along with that. Um, the third question we did was what draws you to Super Splash? And as you can see, a lot of there are a lot of different things that bring people to Super Splash, but one of the things that I think is really important that you also need to know when looking at this is the previous chart that shows the different group, the different groups of people from different areas. So Super Splash is also bringing people to the Raytown community. They're bringing their, their money here, they're spending their time here, which is really good in keeping our community alive. A lot of people are coming to Super Splash because of the proximity, the sun, the pools, how friendly and fun the environment ultimately is, as well as the amenities we do offer, like birthday parties and school lessons. That is it. It's Loki, and, and uh, hey, I gotta tell you, you had a lot of excitement for what's going on. I'm sure that has uh, that helped to why the attendance was up this year. So nice, nice presentation, Miss Loki. You should be very proud of your daughter. <laughs> Questions for uh, for Katie? Sir. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'd like, before, before we go, I'd like not to go beyond what we was just talking about this because we also have a super splash issue on the agenda, so don't forget that as well. As we as we talk. First off, I'm glad you're talking about it's on the beach. <laughs> uh, the promotions you were discussing, uh, I noticed we had quite a few of them going on. This year, was anything used with the newspapers or anything like that? Yes, they um, our intern would contact the newspaper. And she also would print out those flyers you guys did see, and we would post them throughout the Raytown area, John's Apple Markets, Price Shoppers, libraries, and like that. Okay, that's good. Uh, it's great it's going on social media and everything else today, and you guys are doing great work. You really are. So that's all I want to say. Mr. Lightfoot. <laughs> So my question was on the promotions as well, which like also that was a lot of great questions. Did I mean? Did you track what type of uh, increase or surge in attendance you would get when you would do one of those type of promotions? We did not, and the one thing about obviously a pool in the summer, and that's the one thing we learned towards the end of the summer, is we would spend all this time on an activity while it might rain. So we pushed it into instead of one day, we would do a weekend activity. And honestly, this summer wasn't, I mean, I can't remember how many days were past 100 to be completely honest right. with you, but people did get excited about it and we learned from it. So we learned to do weekend events instead of week one day, because it was, we didn't want to waste all that time and energy planning and then it was a rain out and we had a really small crowd that day. Well, I love the enthusiasm and, and the marketing techniques are pretty awesome. I mean, that's definitely well above what we Done to market it in the past. A good job. The service. Uh, again, thank you. thanks for coming today and showing all these things that you should have the park board. I just like to encourage all the aldermen up here to you know, attend the park board meetings and, and uh, as they make suggestions for Super Splash and for our parks department to go to those park board meetings. So it doesn't have to be relayed through a system. I think it would be great if you uh, went there and, and they really are a nice and open group over there. I'm sure they would love to hear from all of you. Uh, I'd actually like to encourage that as being a good voice for, for all the ideas that you should come off of this piece. But uh, thank you for the great job. And, you know, on a marketing budget of about $5, I think you did pretty good. So, 
being a school teacher, you learn how to make stuff out of trash. You did very good. That's great. Thank you. You like my Um, I, I just, excuse me, uh, I guess echoing everybody else, my biggest concern when uh, I was asked to serve on the Super Splash Committee that we formed uh, a year ago uh, was the fact that it seemed like that the marketing with it was stagnant and you have made it come alive. Uh, it is very nice to see that we're doing all these activities, all these events, and that, <coughs> excuse me, and that we're using social media to its max, or I will, I won't say that. We're using social media to its potential, and that's huge. Especially, we're saving the we're saving money for the super flash, we're saving money for the parks, we're saving money for the city, and we're getting the maximum potential that we can get by basically free advertising through social media. So I just wanted to commend you ladies on that. Thanks. The whole social media thing's catching on. I think it's really going to come out good. <laughs> Facebook. I mean, I've heard about Facebook. This smells on. It's pretty good. Yeah, it's catching on. I just wanted to thank you. I really appreciate all the work that y'all did and thinking outside the box with your events and trying to come up with different things. And I think it paid off because people were acknowledging and, and coming to Super Splash. And as anything, you learn as you go, as like you said. But I really appreciate your enthusiasm and kind of that oomph that you guys got this year with promoting it perhaps a different way. And I think the intern thing, that was a very good, smart move. Oh. Excellent. Anything else? Yeah. Mr. Mark, again? Yeah, Katie, there's something I need to tell you, but uh, I had to talk to your father to do it And he said, told me, he's going to let you know that you need to take a few more days off. That's great. Yes, as the former aquatics director of the uh, old Raytown Swim Club, and having used that pool for 40 years, I really applaud such a creative team for what you did. Uh, it seemed to me, and I don't know, can't tell you that I'm really uh, an expert on the parks, but I would bet that that's the most comprehensive program put together for any single park that addresses a large number of individual groups, such as uh, the handicapped or whatever they have, the, the, the older people too. Um, really good. Um, also, uh, the, uh, the fistful of, of, of free tickets that we gave away uh, were specifically to be targeted to give to people that weren't going to the park, which I did. <coughs> and uh, in every single case that uh, I gave those tickets, those people came back and had a very, very praising approach of, of, of response to the park because they liked it. They like the guards there, they like the place, they, want, they all tend to, to go back again when they share that with you. Because I thought that was a great, uh, a great thing you did. Um, and then lastly, I think there's probably a lot of other ideas out there that we can do for next year. I mean, it's obvious that you're very creative. Um, and I guess Amanda, you probably have more ideas. So uh, thank you very much. And, and I, that, that part's very special to me personally. Ladies again, I think you've heard the, the group and we're very much in favor of what's happening. It's certainly the excitement that you both bring to it. I appreciate you coming out tonight. You might stick around and some questions coming up there. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, with that, we're going to uh, begin a legislative session at this time. We only have the, uh, the one item on the consent agenda. I'll seek a, a approval. Motion to approve. Second. Motion is made and seconded to approve the consent agenda. Any further discussion?
No, I said yes. <laughs> Sorry, that's why I'm confused. I'm like, okay. Sorry. 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 That's a quick point. That's a quick point. Item number two, I'm under the regular agenda points. Resolution authorizing and approving additional funds through change of order to the Blind Window Construction Inc. for the White Oak West Blind Aid Sanitary Sewer Improvement Project in the amount not to exceed. Fifty-three dollars and ninety-seven dollars. Total contract amount not to exceed three million fifty-seven thousand nine hundred ninety dollars and fifty-seven. Very good. So the engineer Jason. Yeah. This is the uh, sewer project on Eighth Third Street. Change order number two. Um, we're pretty much finished. We're doing the final quantities now. There will be another change order number three and final. Um, but this is change over two for some extra work that was done. Four, um, four nine items that overran, and then three new nine items that we added to the project for uh, things in the field that came up that we had to uh, address. Any questions? Questions or answers? I will assume that if all change orders were at the going rate of the original project, and this was since we bought more pipe and connected to more people, it added more cost to the project. Yeah, so, yeah, I don't have the final numbers yet, but yeah, so far this has increased. The first change order was roughly 13000 and this one is 53000 Has these change orders already included repaving the detour on 82nd Street? No, that will come out of our annual um, annual overlay contract. But will it be somewhat paid by the sewer since some of the deterioration on there? Or yeah, we were. It or was is that not decided yet? If, if the cost to do it during our annual overlay was cheaper than to do it through the sewer project, okay. we chose to go with that way. Sounds sounds good. Thank you. Life of so I'm, I'm not sure if this is where the funds come in or not, but um, a lot of the, the manhole covers along 83rd Street that need, I think they need raised. You know, there's a lot of the, those water main or sewer covers that are pretty low. So when you hit them going, you know, 30 miles an hour, 35, it's a pretty bumpy ride. We, we have addressed the sanitary sewer manholes. The contractor's been doing that over the last uh, week or two. The only thing left out there are the water valves, the smaller, like uh, eight inch lids. So the larger diameter lids, the ones that, that are in place, like that I drove over today, that's as, that's as good as they're gonna get. Yeah, we, everything should have already been fixed. Um, do you know exactly where this was? Oh, quite a few spots along 83rd Street there from, you know, yeah. obviously from Ray Town Road up to about Stark. Right. I mean, it's, that's a long way. I would have to come up with the exact intersection. So there are about three spots there. That yeah, it's probably the water pumps. All the sewer that should be fine. I'll get some that. I'll get some locations. Sewers. <coughs> Uh, you're saying that there's going to be another change order? Yes. Uh, do you know approximately what the cost of that is going not. to be? I do not. There will be some pluses and minuses. Some items were underrun, and some items will be some more overruns, but I don't have the exact figure yet. I'll bring that to the board next month. Thank you. Mr. Walker. Uh, first off, I'd like to thank citizens along 83rd Street for being so patient. Secondly, some of the grade was another issue. I know these aren't in, but I am going to ask about some of the grading behind White Oak Creek. Is that, is that been properly done yeah, now? Yeah, it has been uh, uh, done again. Has there, uh, has everybody's equipment been removed? Because I did notice the back hole there off 83rd Street, uh, concrete, that, that's concrete. The, uh, uh, the, creek the gas company, the gas company is still working okay. in that area, but they, they still have a couple open holes and some equipment. <coughs> okay, there's so some deteriorating lids on these catch bases. I've noticed that. Isn't that along, this, along there also that it should be looked at? In fact, uh, 
some of them replaced, some haven't. Yeah, there was a couple they broke that we did replace. Uh, there are some These other- look like they've been checked out construction. Yeah, there's, there's some other lids that we did not do, but. Okay, and the sewer lids, yes. Uh, some of them are down to down to low. If you just really check those, make sure we get those up so we don't get a lot yeah. of things like that on up. I will, I will look at it again tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Alderman Josh Green? Yes. 
Alderman Van Vester? Yes. Alderman Ager? Yes. Alderman Lightfoot? Yes. Okay, I'm number three, please. A resolution authorizing and approving the emergency purchase of a traffic control box and components and admitting the fiscal year 2013-2014 budget in the amount of $19,125. We have our interim public works director, Mr. Tim Melvin, to address this. Thank you, Mayor. The project we're talking about here was caused by a traffic accident where a motorist collided uh, with, among other things, our traffic control box for that signal. Um, the impact from the vehicle was such that he contacted, I believe, with other five vehicles, uh, and the impact to our control box bent the control box so that it was not, it was not sealed and, and protect the hindrance from, the, from water. So we ended up having to replace the, the control box and a number of the internal components. The crew was able to cobble it back together for 24 to 48 hours, but that was not all they could really guarantee that it would run. Um, so the damages to it, it, it pretty much had to be replaced as a total box. And uh, we were able to, to do that in, in about 48 to 72 hours. And so that's the basis for the, for the before, before the question gets asked, is the insurance does the uh, individual that struck these does the insurance cover this or this Henry? There were four vehicles involved and this traffic box. So the funds will be will be dispersed amongst all the parties. So I filed the claim. And once we know our share, it's then it will come back to us. Perfect. Okay. So we will have some assistance, hopefully, for the insurance company. Uh, okay. Questions for uh, Mr. Bowen, Mr. Ager. Motion to approve. Second. Mr. Mo Mr. Ager's got the motion to approve. Second by Ms. Nelson. Further discussion before we vote. I, uh, I uh, appreciate the fact that this was brought before us because since it was an emergency purchase, <coughs> uh, it would. Uh, had to come before us, but uh, I do I do appreciate the fact that you are letting us know about it, and uh, uh, thank you. The uh, action the emergency policy uh, requires us to notify you as soon as possible. Uh, obviously, we couldn't notify you before we spent the money because we had to get back in service, but we certainly want to make the council, or the, excuse me, the board of aware. <coughs> Very good. All right, any further discussion? Yes. Alderman Van Vesker? Yes. Alderman Emerson? Yes. Alderman Josh Green? Yes. Alderman Mock? Yes. Alderman Lightfoot? Yes. Okay, I'm going to four, please. A resolution approving the authorizing execution of a First Amendment to agreement between the City of Raytown and Builders Development Corporation for Professional Administrative Services. That's our development of our affairs director. Anything you'd like to add on this, sir? Uh, yes, briefly. Uh, this resolution amends an existing agreement we have in place with Building Development Corporation uh, that was adopted on April 19, 2011, as part of our uh, authorized, as part of our NSP three grant uh, for 1.25 million dollars for the purpose of implementing programs. <coughs> excuse me. Uh, focused on the rehabbing and demolishing and rebuilding of vacant and foreclosed homes and land in, in the targeted area right now, as I mentioned earlier, it's not of 59th Street. Uh, this grant was, we partnered with cities of Sugar Creek and Grand Rewan, and home with this grant has also helped provide uh, funding to rehab and construct homes in those cities as well. Uh, since that time, all but a few thousand dollars of this grant have been expended and additionally to date, out of the $1.25 million NSP3 grant, the resulting project income has provided $1.75, excuse me, $1.7 million in housing and rehab uh, in the three cities. So uh, the $1.25 million we've actually been able to leverage another half a million dollars, or nearly half a million dollars in additional housing, uh, rehab, and construction. Uh, the grant funds, however, continue, uh, or will, continue to provide some project income from the 
sale of the homes in these three cities. Uh, the project income is used to purchase is then used to purchase additional homes for rehab or for demolition and construction of new homes, and then resell, which then provides additional income uh, to the project income. The project income currently is considered uh, to be part of the <coughs> excuse me is considered to be part of the grant, and as such is subject to the payment of administrative fees to Mid America Regional Council in the state of Missouri Department of Economic Development to each take an administrative fee out of those project incomes each time a property is sold. This amendment will change future project income from being collected and paid to the city as part of the NSP3 grant program and instead through our agreement with Builders Development Corporation, the project income will go to Builders Development Corporation for use in accordance with our reuse plan that will be adopted uh, as, on December 12, 2011 as part of our NSP3 grant. The resulting um, the result, if amendment adopted, the Mid America Regional Council and State of Missouri would no longer be able to get their administrative fees or take an administrative fee out of the future project income. So that would provide additional, uh, an incremental additional funding that we could then use for further housing, rehab, and construction. So with that, staff is recommending that this amendment be adopted. I'd be happy to answer any questions. And again, Eric Burke from Builders and Development Corporation is here tonight. If you have any questions that he can answer as well. Thanks, Walt. Any questions, Mr. Benson? <coughs> Mr. Van Rasberg. So, <coughs> in excess of 15000 a year, that's from the city of Raytown, right? I'm not sure. Um, the the 15000 is requires you as a board to approve it because the, the main funds, we, we're estimating project income will be approximately 400000 for the year. Okay. Which under the purchasing policy, because it exceeds 15000 the Board of Aldermen is required to approve that. All right. Will there be money coming out of the taxpayer's pockets? No. Paper this. this is all project income from the sale of the homes. From the, through the grant? Actually, it's no longer, it's just the residual of the grant funds. But because of the, the grant? <clears throat> yes. Okay. understand. I, uh, it just it goes against my grain to have the government at any level involved in uh, the housing business. I just I think it's uh, I know the federal government's very involved in that. I know that's where grant monies came from to start with. I know the American Regional Council very involved in that. But I uh, I have problems with it, and uh, I think it's something we probably should not be involved in uh, as a city. My, my personal view and uh, something I've always believed. Sir, motion to approve. Second. Motion to made and seconded. Further discussion? Ms. Emerson. Uh, I like the idea that it's being streamlined and that they will be taking care of it and there will be Mark will not be involved and it will give added funds to do more development in, in our city. And if the money will go to our city. For the discussion, Mr. Fox. Yeah, just a quick question, John. Uh, I'm at, I know this goes back a few months ago, but uh, is there one house still for sale in Raytown? There are. Um, Pardon me for barging in again. Um, there are currently two homes for sale in the city of Raytown. One is located at 10613 East 53rd Street. Um, and then the other is 5420 Laurel Avenue. Uh, Laurel Avenue is a brand new home. Um, of course, 10613 is a rehab. It's uh, just a slab on grade uh, ranch style home. Uh, they're currently still for sale. Both of them are for sale. However, uh, I just heard today that we actually have somebody who's going to be making an offer on the home on Laurel Avenue. What so, was the sale price on these homes? Um, and I'm working off the top of my head, so uh, you know, down to exact dollars. I'm not going to go that far. Um, Laurel Avenue, because it's a brand new three-bedroom, two-bath, single-family home, um, split level style, I believe that one is at 128000 and John, if you have it, correct me. Um, 
and then 10, 6, 13 is, as I said, smaller, three bedroom, one bath, slab on grade. I, I believe it's around 100,000. Um, it comes with a fairly nice yard. But uh, yeah, that's, that's where we're at today. And then we've got two under, brand new under construction next door to uh, 10, 6, 613 East 53rd Street. That'll be uh, available uh, in the spring. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. So, the sale of these is still limited by uh, by income. It has to be below a certain threshold and to the community. Is that that's correct? That's okay. part of it. Now, but Mid America Regional Council has no involvement now. Is it? They currently do, but if the amendment is adopted, they would no longer have involvement in these funds. Okay. Thank you. I think it's exciting that the federal government applied money to help housing projects and to improve the residents in our neighborhood. I think it's a wise use of the money. So I certainly want to contradict that. It's been said about this. I'm also proud that the Mid-America Regional Council is involved to make this happen. So you can ask any of the neighbors that surround these properties and ask them if they're happy about what's happened. You can ask any of those on the block about if they're happy with what has happened. The neighborhoods are pleasantly, uh, very pleasant with has happened to the uh, improvements on there and the property value support. No further discussion? Call the vote, please. Alderman Ertz? Yes. Alderman Nelson? Yes. Alderman Mock? Yes. Alderman Josh Green? Yes. Alderman Mike Yes. Alderman Ben Besker? No. Alderman Azier? Yes. Alderman Emerson? Yes. All right, with that, we'll uh, ask for the form of the reading on item number five, please. A resolution authorizing and approving the budget of the Parks and Recreation Department for fiscal year 2015-2015. Mr. Bowden, Parks and Recreation Director, anything you'd like to add on the subject? Good evening, Mayor Bauer and members of the board. Uh, I want to mention that Allie and Katie have over 25 years of pool experience between the two. They've done an outstanding job and improved our attendance this summer. And uh, our revenue went up as well. So I can't thank them enough for all their effort. They put in a tremendous amount of time recruiting and evaluating staff and training staff before the season ever started throughout the summer. So those uh, two ladies along with the other staff did a fantastic job. On Monday night, the Park Board approved the park budget that does indeed include uh, the operation of Super Splash in 2015. It does indeed include 50000 set aside for a park comprehensive study, as well as uh, $75,000 for capital improvements in the park system and 50000 for pool improvements as well. I'll be happy to address any questions you have. Mr. Ertz. Uh, thank the Park Board for, for their longer than usual work on the subject. And uh, I'll start with just a motion to approve this project. I know the, the, the budget, and uh, it'd be my desire to keep the Super Splash open, obviously. Second. I was by Mr. Ertz, a second by Mr. Mock to approve the budget. Into discussion. Mr. Mr. Ertz. I have a question for Mr. Shaw. <coughs> Uh, now this includes an amount of money that would come from the city to assist in those capital improvements. Is that correct? Some eighty thousand dollars. And if that is correct, where is that money exactly coming from? Where, where are we going to reduce spending in the budget some other, some other place? Before you answer that question, I think I want to make sure that when, you, when we say from the city to another department, we are all one. So if one department is asking for funds from the general fund or an allowance from the general fund, we are all one. We're not a city and a park department or a city and a police department. We are one. Mr. Sharp. I understand that, Mr. Mr. Sharp. Mayor, but I'm still speaking. Uh, I understand that. You asked a question. Mr. I, I did ask a question, but I haven't quite finished my statement since made yours. The, uh, the added thing I'm going to say is that yes, it, we are, it is a partner city, but it has been separated. 
It has its own budget. It has uh, its directors appointed specifically by the park board. It's the park board that sets that budget. Uh, yes, there's greater co cooperation than there has been in the past, certainly between the park department and the rest of the city. But yes, it should certainly be uh, considered as much part of the city as any other department. I agree with that. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Farmer, would you like to continue, please? Uh, good evening, Mayor Bauer, Board of Aldermen. I think the question you're asking me tonight, <coughs> whether I have decided where the money is going to come from or not, it just depends how the governing body is going to vote. In the absence of that, I'm not going to contemplate or figure it out where the money is going to come without knowing the the board or the direction given to the staff. Mr. Whitefoot. Uh, Mr. Sherman, just because this is kind of complicated for people to understand and maybe people that are, are going to see this at home as well, but so Mr. Boji just suggested that this budget that the park board approved and that's before us tonight has $75,000 in the budget for capital improvements for Super Splash. In the parks. In the parks. In the parks only. 75,000, and then it's got another 50,000 set aside for what specifically? Parks Comprehensive Study. For the Parks Comprehensive Study. <clears throat> so, to Alderman Van Buster's point, is there an additional, the money you described there, is there an additional $80,000 that comes from somewhere in order to to make this happen. I'm just trying to make everyone be clear of what Mr. Van Buster's question was. I'm a little mixed up myself. The repairs required to open Super Splash are estimated at $166,000 for 2015 to open the doors. What the park board has, has uh, approached the city with is a proposal to cost share that $160,000, $80,000 from parks, $80,000 from the city. As I understand it, that is the recommendation of the park board. Okay, and that, that helps with clarity a little bit just because as the mayor stated, we are all one city and we're all one entity, but there is money from the park board and then there is an extra money asked for from wherever it comes from. I just wanted to get that clear for people to understand and, and for myself to understand. Mr. Hurts. Yes, I believe the way we had thought of this was the uh, parks is in very much need of a comprehensive study, not only for you know what the citizens of this town want, but also the funding for what this, the citizens of this town want. But rather than close the park and then do a study, the thought was let's let's find out more detail of what needs to be done uh, and go forward once that is done. Uh, but there's no sense in, in order to keep the park open, certain holes have to be met, and the park board feels that depending on how their budget looks, this would this would be what they felt would make them comfortable with uh, approving the, the super splash. They're actually changing their minds, so to speak, from one budget to the next. I think it's a it is a, a good idea to uh, do this to help us down the road as we learn more and more about the park system. It will allow them to uh, make some certain improvements that, that should be done uh, right away, rather than next April or May when it's too late to do anything to the park. Uh, it kind of kicks the can down the road for us on this this uh, decision. Uh, obviously, uh, perhaps a couple things which I hope and I probably know will happen is once we have a finance director here and we will dig into, you know, the Parks Department board will dig into more you know, what they need for financing of the park system that the citizens want and we will go from, from there. Um, that, that said, uh, I'm just glad that uh, we have this choice tonight. Mr. Mayor, 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 Mr. Mayor,
So basically, $80,000 is what the park is asking the city to help us, help them. So what it will mean, what it will mean if this goes up, for, this vote goes up permanently. The budget that we just approved two weeks ago, you're asking indirectly to me to come back and amend the budget and find out $80,000, get that approved. And so therefore, there has to be some rethinking, some, some uh, ideas that we are going to float around with the management team if this goes through and reduce the budget that we approved two weeks ago by $80,000. Does it require another meeting of this body to approve that prior to November 1st? That would be an amendment to the budget. No, it, it is not required because you have already approved the budget. Okay. However, it is an amendment that I had to bring it to the governing body after the reduction in the budget that was approved two weeks ago. Ms. Bells. Okay, um, when Mr. Boji stated his numbers, he stated that there's $50,000 needed for a comprehensive study, correct? Okay, and I do agree with that because we need that and we can kind of get the overview there. Then he also stated there's $75,000 for capital improvements in the parks only, correct? Correct. Then another $50,000 for pool improvements. That's in the budget. Okay. And those are all in your budget. Correct. But with this, the, what we have before us, it's also being asked of the city for the additional $80,000 to come from our general fund, perhaps, because we would have to amend our budget that we just passed two weeks ago in order to approve that $80,000. We can approve it today by a yes vote all those different money suggestions, correct? Because they're all in this document before us. Yes, that is my understanding. Okay. Unless finance, uh, I believe that's correct. Okay. So yes. Okay. Treasurer. Um, From the standpoint of many of my constituents anyway, they see the Parks Department, the Fire Department, the City, the EMS, the Police Department, as the City of Raytown. They don't really see a difference. The people that go to work every day and come home by their they pay their taxes. So they see it all in one. Even though it may not exactly be that way, certainly they are all part of what we call Raytown. Um, and this board is just kind of filling in for people that may be watching this on television that don't have the background. But this board is charged with overseeing the total budget of the city for the police department and, and the park department. And when you came forth with your budget, um, we actually excluded that when we passed the city budget. That's why we're back here tonight, just so everybody understands that. Um, and one of the reasons why we did that is because many of the people on this board felt that supervisors is a vital part of the city. Um, and that's why we excluded the park budget for that. And that's why we've looked into super SPAC. Um, I personally support um, what we've done here. Um, even if we have to take money from Peter to pay Paul, so to speak. Um, because there are many people on this board that believe that what we're doing here to preserve this park is necessary. So I do support that. Thank you. Mr. Green. I just want to confirm this. Is my understanding correct, though, that even if this board were to negate this today, that basically the budget would revert to last year's budget where the pool would stay open? Did stay well, am I right? Or I just want to be sure. If you know you already approved the city budget, so that's not a question. Uh, but in general, if the governing body failed to approve a budget by a certain date, which in our case October thirty first, then the previous year budget take precedence. So in that regard, the previous year budget included 
everything in that budget is move forward. Okay. I just want to make sure I understand this correct. Thanks. All right, we've got a motion and a second. Ms. Carlson, one more. Yeah. Like I said before, you know, the comprehensive study, capital improvement parks and pool improvements, I can see that. I'm a little hesitant on the 8,000 with cost share in the city, which, you know, this isn't line item now. I mean, it is in the other documentation, but in the resolution. And what I want to know is <coughs> the $80,000 is included in this resolution to be passed tonight. If it is, can it be taken out and then be brought forward at a later time as a separate item? If you look at the R budget, the number Excel sheet that has provided to you, there is nowhere 80,000 is mentioned. Where you find 80,000 dollars is in the Raytown Park Board minutes October 20th, 2014, as well as the RBA that was provided to you. Okay. So that shows the intent of the park board when they deliver the approval of their budget, keeping the super splash open as a desire of some of the governing body members. So that was presented. However, the numerical numbers of the budget <coughs> we're going to approve tonight does not include $80,000. So if you approve the park board budget, it does not have that $80,000 number. However, if you look at the minutes and the RBA, their intent is, and I will read it for the record, uh, when, it, when there was a new, under the new business, Michelle Sipes mentioned to approve the fiscal year 2014-15 budget, option with super splash open, contingent upon a city park cost share agreement with each party responsible for pool capital improvements cost not to exceed $80,000. They open second the motion and motion passed. So what it means, they, they're expecting that city share and capital improvements not to exceed $80,000 if the city governing body wishes to continue to open the super splash. So it is not included in the budget, but that is the intent. So if the direction is given for them to move forward to keep the pool open, then I think at some point, city and park will uh, enter into an agreement with the understanding of the capital improvement that they are going to do at the pool that they will share the cost up to $80,000. So yes, when you approve the budget, you're not approving $80,000, but you're understanding the intent. The intent of it, okay. All right, thank you. Very good. <clears throat> Mr. Mayor, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Well, initially, as I as I looked at this, I uh, I certainly felt like it might be the right thing to do. I, I want to see <coughs> Super Splash stay open. I think that would be better for our community, better for our city. Uh, I'd like to see it stay a part of our parks department. I do have concerns if it does close, what's going to be there? Are we just going to have an empty facility that's sitting there boarded up? Uh, you know, there's a potential of selling that facility to make it profitable for a, uh, someone who might be able to come in and make some changes and then make it profitable and not, uh, the city not operate it. I don't know, I have a lot of questions about it. I. The other, the other thing is certainly the possibility. I know a lot of the repairs that need to be done were to things that really aren't necessarily related to the pools themselves. So we could possibly operate one or two pools, community pools, and, and
and eliminate some of the other amenities there and make it uh, maybe maybe more profitable. I uh, I don't know whether that's a possibility. I know it was brought up by some members of the park board, in fact. Um, it's uh, it's just difficult to make a decision about this, and I know that uh, you know we had a lot of needs for for money in our city for street improvements, for sidewalks, for street lines, for a lot of other things, uh, and uh, you know we have just so much money to to utilize for everything. But uh, I, I appreciate you bringing this before us, and uh, I. I my understanding is that this budget does not include that additional amount from the city. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay, thank you. It's important to note that Super Splash has projected revenue of $250,000 in 2015. Estimated expenses, $394,000. That's, that's fine saying that. Our charge to you, sir, as the director of the Parks Department, is to do a hell of a lot better than that. And we we can't. We do not. We do not want to continue to lose the amount of money that we have lost over the number of years. We're looking for it to be managed differently. We're looking for costs to be cut where it needs to be cut. We're looking for for things to improve. We saw tonight a very good presentation. Speaking for myself as the mayor, not for this board, but I look for a better management <coughs> of this and the city's the citizens' money when it pertains to our park system. So I'm excited <coughs> that we're getting ready to undertake a study of all the parks. And a part of this goes to every single park, every single square footage of our park in this city to look at what should be spent on an annual basis from capital improvements as well as maintenance. And for that to be protected in five years, 10 years, and 15 years. So the citizens and this board can start to make intelligent decisions along with the park board mm -hmm. to make sure the money is being spent. The taxpayers' money needs to be spent correctly and for the right things. We're looking to you, sir, to manage that effort. I believe we're on the right track. Three years ago, we spent two, we lost $225,000 at Super Splash. Last year, it was $166,000. We're moving in the right direction. We're forecasting $144,000 loss for next year. Hopefully, we can move that needle in the right direction. Perfect. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor just a couple more comments. Uh, that, that is a concern of mine, that if we do this, if we do come up with some additional funds to assist the park department keeping this open this year, what happens next year? What happens the year after that? Is it, do we have a continuation of that? And uh, that's certainly a concern. I, you know, I look at the cash balance back in 2010, 2011 was a million two, and now we're down way below half of that. You know, that's a concern. I look at the uh, unreserved fund balance, which was over a million dollars in 2011. It's down to, I'm looking at this correctly, it looks like 91,000. Is that correct? That's a huge concern. Mm -hmm. And so, to concur with what the mayor said, I think we really need to think about. Uh, just, you know, thinking outside the box a little bit of what we're doing there. It may take a total reorganization of the park department. Um, you know, I've seen reorganizations in the business world in the past when sometimes they just move everything around and everything really stays the same. Uh, and it's kind of like, you know, taking your car and you, uh, you have a flat tire so you just rotate the tires and uh, you leave the flat there. Uh, we don't need that, certainly, but we do need something to happen to revitalize the parts, to uh, to use the monies we have there uh, in an effective manner. And, uh, you know, it's a big part of our city. It's important for our city, our, our park department is. Thank you. Smells. I do have 
have an additional question. All I, and it was referencing uh, Alderman Van Buskirk's. In 23 2014, as projected, the unreserved fund balance is 580000 give or take. And it goes <coughs> estimated in the 2014 15 <coughs> down to 91000 Do you have a reasoning of why that would decrease so much? Yes, your revenue is $1.2 million, your expenses are $1.5 million. And due to that, you begin to drop that fund balance reserve. Now, there is a cushion in there of $96,000 for the equipment vehicle replacement that gives you some, some buffer in the, in the budget. But is that each year, you're spending <coughs> down your reserves to maintain your, your park equipment. Right. And we have, we're reaching the end of the useful life of the swimming pool. It's important for the board to be aware that at some point there's going to be some, some costs associated with an older pool. True. And then, <clears throat> but that 96000 cushion mm -hmm. for vehicle replacement, is that only to be used on vehicles or need to take that out to do other cushions in other areas? It could be used as the board. Determined. Seems fit. Right. Okay. Thank you. Park. Right. Park. 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 Mr. Gray. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Gray has a form. Uh, I think he has a change. How much time do you need, Michael? About <clears throat> one minute, maybe less. I'm working. that the park department did to change that park 
that's now having problems. And there was a time when they were making money on it and they were not putting any money aside for repairs. When, because all equipment eventually wears out. A truck does, a car does, and so do parts to pool pumps. So, this, so when they make their report, um, I just don't personally want to hear a comment about the pool 50 years old because that's not the part that's being broken as for the most part. So please, I appreciate that. Ms. Bowson. One more question. Um, the fees for service in 2013-14 had a 67,000 give or take, and then it's increasing to 114,000 in 14-15. Do you know why that increase would be there? Is that the first page? Uh -huh. Yeah, it's 67,800. The basketball program, the youth basketball program is the majority of that revenue. Okay, that's my kind of 47,000 roughly for the youth basketball. We have 424 kids registered. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. All right, we're good. One more count, if you don't mind. Nice guy, actually. I just, you mind. Um, go ahead. I, I will say two things really quick, just really quick things. Um, Firstly, uh, hopefully with the study, watch this. Hopefully with the study, um, we can get a, a more viable financial outlook at the Parks Department because I know that has been a huge concern uh, over these last four months. And secondly, uh, as soon as I was appointed originally to the Parks Board, or not the Parks Board, I'm sorry, the, the Super Flash uh, Governance Committee, um, I I was adamant that with good marketing, which is what we've seen this last cycle. Was super splash this last season with good marketing in a couple of years time that we can possibly turn we can turn this around to be where it isn't as big of a liability as we see it as and with the marketing that's occurred over the last season and the fact that i mean if you look at you know i'm just using facebook here they're up to 1700 followers that's that's huge and the fact is on social media and anyone that knows youtube demographics and everything can tell you that those likes and subscriptions, whatever you talk, talk about, they grow exponentially. And so the more time, the faster they grow. Um, so I, I think if we keep it up for year, I think we're going to be in for some good surprises. I think that uh, certainly the park board armed with information from the study. Yes. They're better able to make a decision on the facts. They bring it back to us. We make the, uh, we make the inevitable decision on their recommendations. So yeah. I'm excited. I think the study's a good thing.
budget of the park board was passed only contingent on <coughs> with Super Splash being open about the, the cost share thing. If this does not pass tonight, how does that, that means that the park board budget that, the, or, that they passed is not valid?
Super Splice does not open in 2015. It is gone. It will never open again. And that's a really important decision for the city. We have, we have people come out and talk to us tonight. I've had a lot of people talk to me. This is, this is within our control. We have worked, we formed an ad hoc committee to work with Park Board's ad hoc committee to, to go through the budget to talk about this $80,000. We've made all the same points together. We've shared those points. We agreed upon those points. I think that tonight we have to make the decision that this budget is approved with the intent of finding a place for the $80,000 good in good state of working together. Just as any department would come to us, if any department had an issue, they would come to us and ask for the same amount of money. I don't want to open up the door to continue to have these things, but this is a real issue within our control tonight. We can reopen Super Splash in 2015. We're armed with a good study. We're able to make an intelligent decision based on the facts. That's what's before us tonight, and I think we should be approving this with the intent of finding a home from which that eight thousand dollars comes from. Further discussion. Ready to vote? Call the vote. We have a motion and a second already. Call the vote. Alderman Harris? Yes. Alderman Mock? Yes. Alderman Nelson? Yes. Alderman Asher? Yes. Alderman Josh Green? Yes. Alderman Vanesker? I'll pass. Alderman Emerson? No. Alderman Nelson? Yes. Alderman Vanesker? Yes. Motion passes. Go do Very great things. Kevin, yeah, thank you. George, thanks for coming out. Ladies, thanks for coming out making your presentation. Mom, be very proud of your girls. All right. Yes.